Now, when a potter is going to make something on their wheel, the first thing they have to do is they have to go out and dig up some clay. Now, when a potter goes out looking for their clay, do you know where they look for it? They look for it in the swamp. <laughs> they look for it in and around the wetlands. Now, when a potter goes out looking for their clay, they're not looking for clay that's going to be perfect. It's got to be just perfect. And do you know why the potter does not go out looking for perfect clay? Because the potter knows there is no such thing as perfect clay. You see, the potter knows when they dig this clay up out of the swamp, it's going to have all sorts of muck and all sorts of mire and all sorts of junk inside of it. And the potter understands that dealing with all that junk that's inside the clay, that's just all part of the formation process. And now the way this process looks is you simply put your clay on your work surface and you, you push down on it. You like that and you squish it. And you push it forward because you're trying to stretch it. And then you roll it back on itself and you twist it and you drive it down into itself and through itself. And you're going to continue this process until this clay has been prepared. If this clay could talk to me as I'm taking it through this uh, crisis moment here, uh, what do you think this clay would be saying to me right about now? Yeah, yeah, he'd be saying, ow, stop, potter, that hurts me. Why, if you were really a loving potter, you wouldn't be letting this happen to me. That's what it would be saying, because this is a really painful process for the clay. But if I, as the potter, if I could talk to this clay in a way that the clay would, could understand me, you know what I would say to this clay in response to its cries of pain and protest? I would say, I would say, clay... I know the plans I have for you. <laughs> but once the clay has been ready here, we're going to take it over and we're going to put it on the wheel. Let's see if we can make something with it. Now that the clay has been centered, it's ready for the next phase, and that is we're going to open it now. The way the potter opens the clay is you take your fingers and you're going to plunge them right into the heart of this clay. And then you're going to draw this clay open. Now, this is a very intimate time between the potter and the clay. This searching out process, it reminds me of the heart of the psalmist. Listen to what the psalmist prays in Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24. He prays, search me, O God, and know my heart. And then you're going to begin this process of drawing the clay upward. And this is a process. And like any process, it takes time. This process here reminds me of James chapter 4, verse 10. Humble yourself before the Lord, and He will lift you. And we can see the work that's taking place on the inside of the clay. You can see it by the way it's reflected on the outside of the clay. Now look at this is exactly how God works. God works from the inside out. Religion works from the outside in. Yeah. A vessel of honor right here. Come on, church. Yes. Amen. Now, if I want to use this clay for the potential for which I have just destined it, I got to take it through a few more stages. The first thing I have to do is I have to set its potential. Now, the way the potter sets the clay's potential is I have to take this clay now and I must, I must put it into the fire. But when this thing comes out of the fire, it's going to look like this. See, fire has a way of purifying things, doesn't it? Fire gives strength to things, doesn't it? This pot's got a song now. You read the second half of Daniel chapter 3, verses 24 and 25, and you will discover that as you are faithful to God going through your fire, God has a way of showing up in the middle of your fire. And when you come out of that thing, and you're going to come out, listen, friend, your life's going to have a song. I let this piece dry out. You see, this is the person who's dried out spiritually. So what does that mean for this clay now? Does that mean that this clay is now hopeless? No. No, this clay isn't hopeless. This clay is just hard. You know what happens to clay when it dries out? It gets really brittle. I'm going to take this dry clay. 
and I, I am going to break it. Here, you see this clay here? This clay here, this is the person who loves God. They love the potter. This is a little pebble. Look, I'm going to stick it in the clay. Okay. So this is a wound in this person's life. Maybe this person was molested when they were little. Maybe they went through a painful divorce. Uh, maybe they were abandoned when they were little. That's one of my wounds. Now I'm going to tell you three reasons why it is so important that you heal from that wound that's in your soul. And so here you are. This is you. You're limping through your life, trying to do the best you can, trying to love Jesus, be a good person. And then one day, when you least expect it, your life comes crashing down around you. And you sit here in your brokenness and you sit here in your confusion and you say, God, why me? Why me, God? Why me? Did your life ever look like this? And you finally cry out to God and you say, God, help me. I'm tired of trying to control everything and everybody. God, help me. And God, who the Bible tells us in Psalm 46, 1, he is a very present help in our time of trouble. God, he comes along and he picks you up. Oh, he picks you up up your broken life with all of your guilt all of your shame all your addictions all your messed up relationships he picks up your broken life and he carries you over to his special place and there he's going to dry your tears and then he's going to start to bring you through a process a process of getting your life put back together again and then when the Father is ready, He's going to take your life, a life that was once so broken, and He's going to put you back on the wheel. But He puts all of you on the wheel, all of you, because God wants all of you. He's going to begin to lift you. Once again, He's going to lift you. The potter never gives up on the clay. Amen. So God lifts you up out of your brokenness. And he gives you a calling. And then he's going to do something with your life. He's going to give your life a calling. And then... He's going to give your life an equipping. Why does he do this? He does this so that you can now take from your broken life and you can pour, you can pour from your broken life into the life of another broken person so you could bring them into a relationship with the potter so they can find healing for their broken life just like you found for yours. Come on, that's the gospel right there.